Hey, hey, Sammy Do coming to you live from Precious World Office Studios. Real estate mentor and coach and investor, founder of the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. I want to talk to you today about prerequis prerequisites that are necessary uh, in order to be in the real estate investing business. If you uh, ever thought about getting into the real estate investing business or if you are in the business and still trying to get your first or second deal, uh, you definitely want to subscribe to this channel because we come to you from a grassroot standpoint, giving you the golden nuggets, the secret sauce that you're not getting anywhere else. And I want to talk to you about the two prerequisites uh, to be in this business. Sammy Do, live from Precious World Studios, doing it again, dropping another golden nugget. isn't for everybody not everybody's cut out for this business so without these two requisites if you can't acquire these prerequisites this could be a money pit for you so this is why I want to give you the raw grassroots truth about how uh, what you would need in order to be successful in this business okay so we're talking about the prerequisites two prerequisites uh, that, that are needed if you want to get into real estate investing. And uh, we've already talked about the first one being a level of education. And we talked about that the best way and the quickest way to getting that level of education in the business is to acquire a mentor because uh, that's going to help you uh, shorten the learning curve on understanding and learning how the business works. And it's also going to save you a lot of money from doing a lot of trial and error type things and making mistakes and possibly any litigation. So uh, don't want to belabor that because we've already talked about that. The second uh, prerequisite uh, that you need in order to do this business is what I call a set of skills, a set of skills. And I've uh, covered a number of skills in this particular video. I want to cover the skill of discipline, the skill of discipline. You have to be disciplined uh, as an entrepreneur. You have to be disciplined uh, building your business. And discipline is not something that you're born with. You have to also understand that there might be some natural innate skills within the discipline arena that you might already have, but the majority of discipline is developed and grown and improved. And, um, I want to give you uh, 10 solid golden nugget points on how you can improve your discipline. Um, you know, I'm an ex-cop, so I can tell you, for instance, uh, a lot of these bad shootings and things of that nature that you see out there from cops uh, is undisciplined shootings uh, for whatever those reasons are. Uh, but this is also why I'm a proponent of not everybody should be carrying weapons. I know, you know, Second Amendment folks are out there and all that, but there's a lot of folks that are just not disciplined enough to handle the stress and the things that come along with carrying a deadly weapon. Not everybody can stand a sight of blood, so they shouldn't be a phlebotomist, shouldn't be a nurse, right? Uh, handling stress is also something that uh, if you're not disciplined enough to handle stress, you shouldn't have a weapon. That's almost just the same effect as, as a mental illness. <laughs> um, and this is why, you know, police officers are supposed to go through regular training uh, when it comes to shoot, don't shoot, and all this kind of stuff. Don't want to muddy up the waters here, but I just want to make a point that discipline as a skill set has to be something that you develop and work on. So I want to give you... Uh, 10 solid golden nuggets, 10 solid points on how to improve uh, your discipline skill set. Number one, first of all, you want to know what your weaknesses are. You, you definitely want to know uh, what your strengths are, but where the undiscipline comes from, because your strengths can sometimes overcompensate for your weaknesses, but your weaknesses are still going to show up at some point, especially 
if those other skill sets are not necessary and yet this is definitely challenging your weakness you want to know what your weaknesses are and you want to kind of keep them in front of your mind and uh, be able to navigate whatever you're doing to avoid being in a situation of become you know having those shortcomings you want to definitely acknowledge that you have weaknesses um, if you know that you, you kind of have a tendency to want to watch TV all the time when the TV's on. If, if you, you know that you don't want a TV in your office, <laughs> don't put a TV in your workspace. Um, if you got a weakness for, um, uh, you know, if you if you got weakness for alcohol, for instance, you definitely should not be showing up into bars. Uh, you shouldn't be going to places socially uh, where there's, you know, the prime uh, mission is to, to have alcohol, uh, whether it's bars or clubs or things of that nature. But you definitely want to know. It's also very uh, recommended to uh, have an accountability partner that can kind of help you, uh, keep you in check from falling to those weaknesses. So know your weaknesses, have an accountability partner to help keep you in check for those. Acknowledge your weaknesses. So you are, you know, uh, like the, the, the AA uh, group talks about, the first thing you got to do is admit that you are, you know, that you have a problem. That's the first acknowledgement that you need to make in order to begin to overcome that. So knowing your weaknesses and that way uh, you can work that much more harder uh, to, to overcome those flaws or not put yourself in a situation where those flaws uh, will, will will take over you because you're not going to overcome them until you, you, you keep those suckers in check. Um, I'm, I've got my notes here. You also, point number two is definitely remove any temptations uh, from your environment. Um, you know, out of sight, out of mind might seem kind of a cliche is but frankly it, it's real and i use the example of a tv in your office uh if you know that you have a weakness of watching tv a lot and you keep in mind you're trying to be an entrepreneur you may have a day job uh your tv time is gonna have to be cut down if you're trying to keep your day job and start a business you're gonna have to cut your tv time really 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 down and if you got one in your office as long as that's there and it's in your sight, you're, you're, you're always going to be tempted to want to turn it on. So you want to be mindful that uh, if that's a weakness, remove the temptation. Remove the temptations. If, if you've got weaknesses for, you know, like junk food and eating bad, uh, you want to make sure that you're not going to those bad places where you're being tempted to to do it. Keep yourself out of those types of environments. Um, you know, sometimes again, sometimes having that accountability partner uh, can kind of help you out with that. That's why it's important in this business, you know, acquire a coach, acquire a mentor, because they can kind of be in your ear to kind of keep things in check for you. Very, very difficult to do it on your own. That's why many folks don't become successful because of not having a type of life coach that can help you out. Uh, point number three, make sure that you are setting clear goals and a plan that you're going to be able to execute to reach those goals. Make sure they're very clear, not convoluted with a bunch of other whimsical uh, ideals and uh, dreams and things like that. No, no, just set some very clear one, two, three goals that you got plans to execute one, two, three steps to get that goal. And then the, the one, two, three steps to get to that next goal and make them very clear and obtainable, uh, very reasonable, very obtainable. Sometimes you hear the term called SMART, uh, simple, measurable, uh, attainable, you know, reasonable. Uh, and, and, and that's the acronym didn't want to get into all that, but long story short, you want to make sure that the goals are clear and that your plans to figure them out are trackable. That's by the way, what the T is in smart trackable and that you are staying focused on hitting those goals. So that way you don't, uh, 
find yourself in an undisciplined, whimsical, trial and error, wind blowing this way, wind blowing that way, going to and fro, and not making uh, any, any headway. So point number three is set clear goals. Point number four you want is to practice building on your self-discipline. Practice, because again, this is not something you tend to be born with. This is something you have to grow. Uh, the best way to practice is to create and form uh, a, a, a new routine, so to speak. But you want to make sure that you are mastering what you're trying to practice. It, it's a daily and repetitive practice. Um, it's it's, it's kind of like uh, working out. You know, if you know that you're trying to work out physically and you've got to do, you know, three sets of 20 push ups and five sets of 10 sit ups and run two miles that day and making a certain time in those two miles, you know, four minutes, five minutes, whatever. Um, and you do that every day or every other day. That's going to build you self-discipline. That's going to help you push when it comes to your, your work habits uh, for um, building your real estate investing business. Know, know what your disciplines are are that you need to do if you're talking about trying to do cold calls and you're going to make x amount of calls every day or you're going to mail a certain amount of letters every day or are you going to knock a certain amount of doors every day do it do it and 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 be very firm about accomplishing that mission that's going to build self-discipline in fact that takes me to point number five which is forming a habit and the psychologist says that when you do something repetitively for 21 days, that helps you to form a new habit. So uh, this is going to help build discipline by understanding that today you got to do this just like you did yesterday, just like you did the day before. Today is a new day and I'm, I'm going to do it again. And you're going to do that at least for 21 days, which will help you form a habit, which it becomes a little easier after you get past that 21st day to be able to do it again on the 22nd and the 23rd. And now you're building a discipline uh, and, and, and that, that muscle memory is kind of kicking in. So um, it's going to be second nature. Um, that's uh, uh, very critical. To, to build a routine and to form a habit to keep you going in that routine. This is why the military trains so often uh, when it comes to uh, how to run and, you know, take a loose your weapon and put it back together. And, how, you know, they have sometimes speed trials on dismantling the M16 and putting it back together and, you know, doing it under various stress, you know, simulate it you know, bombings and catastrophes that's going on out there. And they're trained under those types of pressure. So when you're out there in the real world, in the real war, per se, you, a lot of the things are going to come by uh, second nature. A lot of the things that's going to keep you alive and keep you surviving is going to come by sec second nature where you don't have to think about it. The undisciplined panics, like a deer in a headlight in some cases. The flight, uh, the, the fight or flee syndrome in some cases. Whereas when you're disciplined, there's no fight, flee. It's, 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 it's getting it done. It's taking care of the mission. And that's the difference when you form a habit on building the skill set. Point number six uh, that I want to make is you're probably not going to see this from coming, but making sure you're eating healthy and keeping good health about your body. Because sometimes uh, you can be distracted because of ailments in your body. I, I know um, I experienced uh, a situation of uh, dealing with a major depression after having a medical crisis and then being put on some prescriptions that uh, really, really sunk me, really, really sunk me. Suicidal thoughts, all of that kind of stuff. And eating habits were not right and all this. And, you know, when you're not healthy, uh, it's hard to to 
execute from a disciplinary standpoint. The good news is when you know where you are and you are aware of these kinds of things, now you know who the enemy is and you can fight the enemy head on. It's not, you're not going to be a blindsided. You know, when I was in that depression, it was kind of a blindside situation. I was going through it for a couple of years, didn't really know until I just realized, hey, some of this stuff is not who I am for my own character. And I began to research and ran into some folks that kind of made some suggestions to me. And I discovered, you know, I'm in major depression. And, and then I also found that it was a result of these bad prescriptions and uh, was able to kind of get to remedying that remedying that right away but it, believe me it, it left a lasting mark and i still deal with some of that issues today but i am aware just like i talked to you about it in the first point being aware of your situation what your weaknesses are so eating healthy and being healthy makes a big difference um, i know sometimes if i were to go grocery shopping and i'm starving i'm buying everything on the shelf my, my eyes are much bigger than my stomach, and I'm just buying everything on the shelf. Not good to go shopping when you're hungry. It's a very undisciplined thing to do, <laughs> in my case, because that's a weakness, right? Um, but, you know, when you're hungry, it can also, you know, oftentimes uh, affect your ability to concentrate. Now, I will give you a, a, a small antithesis. If you, uh, if you practice spiritual fasting, I have also found that spiritual fasting, when you're seasoned at doing that, uh, can actually allow you to focus even better because to, to, to fast spiritually is a discipline. And so um, it's either the one extreme of not being hungry, on the, but then the other extreme is going hungry, but it's on purpose because there's a mission behind your spiritual fast and that can actually actually work for you in building discipline. All right, uh, so just kind of being healthy is very important. Point number seven is you need to work on your mindset with regards to your willpower. Um, being able to exercise self-control. Um, trying to understand how much self-control uh, do you have. Um, you know, it, it's like putting meat fresh meat in front of a lion. If you're the lion and someone throws fresh meat out there, you're probably not going to have a whole lot of self-control to withstand that. But if you were to build on your willpower to say, okay, I know what's coming. I'm getting ready to be thrown, you know, fresh meat. I'm getting ready, you know, I, I'm getting ready to be thrown this pretty woman with no clothes on and I'm going to withstand. <laughs> right? Or, this, this fine guy, and I'm going to withstand, right? Uh, you know, you, you, you've got to, first of all, know what's coming and then change how you view a situation. There's too often, when I'm even talking with new uh, mentees, new students of mine, where I have to work on their mindset first in order to see things differently because they're trying to form habits that, of things that they've never done before. So how would you know what to do? And so I have to spend my time working on them from a perception standpoint about their willpower to do what is necessary to be successful versus uh, being unsuccessful because you don't have the willpower to exercise or execute those types of things. So understand that per your perception, the way you think about a situation is going to produce those results. Um, I was talking with a prospect recently about fear, um, F-E-A-R, right? Um, fear can sometimes make you freeze, deer in the headlight. Fear can make you not do what you need to do to be successful. That's going to keep you away from getting, obtaining your dreams. Why? Because you've never done it before. Why? Because it, it feels like it's going to make you uncomfortable. Why? Because it's, you, you just never have taken a risk like this before. Well, there's an acronym for that. Fear. False evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. And this is why folks fall for that banana in a tailpipe. I want to give you a different acronym for, for fear. Face everything and rise. Change your perception of false evidence appearing real and change it to 
face everything and rise. Whew, man, that was good. Changing your perception and, and strengthening that willpower to do or not do what is necessary to be successful. That's point number seven. Point number eight, I wanted to say, kind of, you know, give yourself a backup plan. So when you're trying to accomplish something uh, and it just doesn't go the way that you were initially planning, have a plan B for it. Uh, it's, 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 this is what makes a good manager uh, of people and a manager of processes because when you have a plan, you tend to have uh, some, some, a plan B and a plan C. And, you know, tell yourself instead of diving into um, something that's so not up to speed that, you know, you're going to have this as a cautionary measure. Um, see if I can give you an example giving yourself a bag up plan. If you know, for instance, we were talking about not going to bars, drinking alcohol, uh, because you got a weakness for alcohol. Uh, you know what? If for whatever reason, because every now and then you might meet with a buyer, for instance, and they want to meet and talk with you a little bit about your deal or whatever. And they say, Hey, can you come meet me at this restaurant and we can talk or whatever. And they're serving alcohol. Make sure you know that you're going to know in your mind that you're only going to drink water. That's your backup plan. I'm going to go to this place that I know that there are some temptations or whatever that I'm going to resist, but here's the purpose. My mission is to understand I'm, I'm talking to my prospective buyer. This is where he wants to meet for whatever reason. It's convenient, close, whatever. Uh, maybe he hadn't had dinner and this is where he wants to eat, whatever. But I'm going to go there with the mission that my mission is to actually talk to him about this deal. And I'm not going to even eat. I'm just going to have water. Already have that as your plan. So you don't fall into anything else. Um, so that's that was point number eight. Point number nine. And I love this point because this helps reinforce your good habits. But make sure that when you get a win that you reward yourself. Know how you're going to reward yourself when you accomplish a win. You know. When you get your first deal and you you made, you know, three, five, seven, ten, fifteen thousand dollars or whatever, carve a little bit and, and, and celebrate a win. Uh, take your wife out or take your husband out for dinner, uh, a nice dinner, uh, you know, hundred dollar dinner maybe, you know, uh, to, to say this is because all the work that went into getting this accomplished and making this goal. I've been able to accomplish and I got a small win. I got a $10,000 check. I'm going to spend a hundred dollars on, on the dinner, right? Don't have to be dinner. Uh, you know, take, take a recreational break, go to, uh, for, for one day, I'm not saying the entire week, but you know, for one day, go to some theme park for a day or some recreational David Buster's or something, or go buy a nice thing of perfume or cologne or something, or, just take a small little win, uh, by, you know, buy a toy, but just take a small little win uh, and reward yourself to reinforce the habits that took you uh, to get there. Um, rewarding yourself is very important in this game because there's a lot of work, takes a lot of focus, takes a lot of energy. You're doing some things you've never done before. Um, you're, you're, and, and you're going to have to learn how to pat yourself on the back uh, to, to reinforce those good habits. And uh, with that in mind, point number 10, forgiveness. You got to learn how to forgive yourself when you do mess up, when you do take a risk that wasn't smart and move on. Don't dwell on it. Don't say, you know, this is not for me. This business is not for me. I'm going to tell you, it took me 10 months to get my first deal. And that's what I kind of say publicly, but what I don't say a lot publicly is, well, to be honest, my very first deal as a full-time investor was buying some assets and it was a bad buy. Uh, in some of my other videos, you guys know I've talked about this. I spent $50,000 on one of them seminars, still never got anywhere until I got a mentor. I took on a partner and a mentor and after 10 months. But prior to those 10 months, I did spend another $50,000 on uh, 
on some assets. And I thought, hey, man, I've got some rentals and, that's, you know, I'm going to be cash flow and all this kind of stuff. It was a bad deal. Bought in a bad area, depreciating, overpaid for the properties. The cash flow wasn't anything. The, 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 the hard money was, was, was bad. It, it, the whole situation was bad. I did that without a mentor. And I got to a place where it was a money pit. And I spoke to my attorneys about it. And they said, your best decision in this case is to let these things foreclose because nobody's winning here. Nobody's winning. And so I lost $50,000 plus on making a bad deal. Now, I could have said after that, real estate's not for me. I could have said, you know, uh, maybe I just don't get it. I don't know enough. I, I could have said, uh, man, this is just, this was a painful loss. But no, I stayed with it. And like I said, and end up getting a partner and mentor and, you know, finally got my first real deal where I made, you know, seven grand off of that after 10 months. And, you know, 130 transactions later have done over a half million dollars of gross income and et cetera, because I didn't give up. I forgave myself for making a bad decision. I forgave myself for some other things and move move continue to move forward so you're going to have to be able to do that and not waddle in your own mess so these were 10 points that i wanted to give you in order to help you improve and develop uh, the discipline skill set because it is not something that comes natural it's something that you have to practice and you have to practice on a regular uh on a regular frequency uh and it takes it takes focus in order to do that and I hope these points uh, w has helped you uh, to not only uh, become an entrepreneur, but also to be successful in the real estate business. I do have a library of other videos that hopefully you will find helpful. And listen, I'm the founder of the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. And if you are needing help with getting your business, trying to get your first or second deal, which I'd strongly suggest if you don't have a mentor, you definitely need one. Um, I know a lot of these gurus out there don't tell you that because they're primarily just kind of, you know, selling products and all this kind of stuff. I provide a grassroots style coaching mentorship. I, I literally take you under my wing and you get all of me um, for a, a, a solid period of time to get you successful. It's my goal and plan to get, help you get your first or second deal within 30 to 60 days. Uh, making anywhere from three to thirty thousand uh, dollars to put in your pocket in that period uh, when you execute the plan a plan will work for you but it just won't be laid in your lap so if you're interested in that kind of thing make sure you uh, for one subscribe to this channel and for two uh, there's the real estate wholesale helpline link in the description of this video uh, click it check out the uh, the site there and get yourself on my calendar there's a link there that you can actually book yourself to get you a free 30-minute consult with me to help uh, talk about your business what you're doing what you need to be doing etc and then if you want to talk about uh, having me as your mentor and things of that nature we can talk about that as well and i can tell you what i will require as well as uh, what uh, uh, you will get, which I will tell you again, it's going to be more like a Cadillac uh, on, a, on a Kia's budget. <laughs> so anyway, until then, I will see you at the top because the bottom sure is where I'm going. Hey, hey, Sammy, do the guru back at you. Hey, uh, are you smelling when I'm cooking? Are you picking up when I'm putting down? You like these golden nuggets that we are dropping at you? Well, if you do, please like the video that you just seen. Also, subscribe to this platform. You can do that by hitting the red uh, subscribe now button somewhere here or there. Uh, look for it, hit the subscribe button. Uh, that would encourage me to continue to put out uh, more content like this and uh, check out my library of other videos as well. Also, don't forget, if you need to set your appointment, the link is in the description, Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. And until then, I will see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. God bless Sammy. Doom, doom, doom. Out.